In this lesson, we'll be creating the background material. Let's begin. This is the last material that we need for our scene. It'll fill in that white void beyond the distant bridge and archway with some scribbles and a dark background. This will help fill out the world and imply wires and blurry details beyond. As usual, before we begin, let's get the file set up. So we'll be again going back to the shading workspace found here at the top, and then we'll set this top right viewport to the rendered mode, which is this far right button. Now we need to select the background plane in either the viewport or the outliner list on the right side. So for me, I can just click on it here, which is this big open area here in the back, or over here you can find it underneath the background collection, and it's called BG Plane. And that's just in one of these collections here on the right side, somewhere near the bottom here. Now let's zoom in down here on the shader editor so we can see better the nodes. And then we'll select this principled BSDF node here, green one, and then hit Control and T at the same time. So just two buttons here. And that will create these three new nodes. These nodes should look pretty familiar as we used those in the last lesson. Let's start by opening the image that we'll be using for this material. We can do that by clicking the Open button here on this Image Texture node. So we'll click this. And then you need to navigate to the folder that has all the textures in it that we used in the previous lessons. So here we can see the metal plates that we used for the other texture. And in this case, we need to use the scribbles.jpg. So we can select scribbles and then go down here and hit open image. With our image loaded, let's go through here and make some changes. So on the left side, we're gonna change from the UV mode, which is currently set to, and we'll instead use the generated mode found here. So we're just gonna click and drag from generated down here to vector. As usual, each of these modes just changes the way that Blender handles the image. In this case, generated works best for our purposes. For the mapping node, we're going to leave it set to point, so we won't be changing that. We will be going down here, though, to where it says rotation, and we're going to switch this to 180 degrees for the Z. So we'll type in 180, hit enter, and that will rotate our texture here just on the Z axis. And then lastly, we need to adjust the scale. Rather than using a value node like we did last time, let's try a different method just so you're familiar with it. So we need to change each one of these values here to 5 instead of 1. And normally you could just go through here and click on each one and type in 5, and that would work perfectly fine. However, there's a little bit quicker way to do this. So you'll find that if you click and drag on the top value and then drag down to the bottom value, you'll highlight all three at the same time, and that'll allow you to change the number for all three of them at the same time. So I'm going to click up here and then quickly drag down, highlighting all three of them, and then you can see here that if I type in a number, it changes it for all of them. So in our case, we still want to have it set to 5, but that's just a quicker way to do it. Now let's add two more nodes to this system to distort the scribble pattern a little bit. This process will be nearly identical to how we added distortion to the panel lines on the object material, so I won't need to explain too much about the logic behind these nodes. So first we need to zoom out, and then we're going to drag select over these two left nodes, so this red and the purple one. We're going to drag them over to make some room, then we can hit Shift and A, go to Search, and type in Noise, N-O-I, here we can choose Noise Texture, place that down here, and then one more time, Shift and A, Search, type in Mix, and we want to choose Mix Color, and then we can place that here. Now let's get these nodes hooked up. So we're going to click and drag this Mix node on top of this purple line to have it automatically connected for us. And then we're going to zoom in down here, and we're going to connect the Factor to the B socket here. And we can see already up here that this noise pattern has started to distort these lines. So it's making them a little bit more squiggly and more organic looking. We're not quite done yet with it though, so let's go down here and adjust some of these parameters. So we'll zoom into this Mix node first. We're going to switch from Mix to Soft Light, found here at the top right. And then we're going to change the factor from 0.5 down to a much smaller number, and we're going to set it to 0.25, so just a quarter. Now adjust this noise texture found down here. And the only thing we really need to change here is just the scale. So we're going to set the scale from 5 down to 1 instead, making this noise pattern much larger and causing a lot less distortion up here. Our next step is to add a second layer of scribbles to create an intersecting cross-hatching pattern. This will make the scribbles a bit more complex and imply more detail in the background. Our first step is to simply make a copy of all the current scribble nodes. So let's zoom out here. We're going to drag select over all four of these nodes, or five actually, so <laughs> five total. We can zoom out a bit more, hit Shift and D to make a duplicate, and we're just going to move them down here. This is going to save us a lot of work, so why not just reuse the work we've already done. Now let's drag select over these nodes here on the right side. We're going to drag them over here to make some room. So right around here should be fine. Now let's add two more nodes. So we're going to hit Shift and A, go to Search, 
type in mix and then choose mix color. We can place that here. And then rather than adding a second mix color, we can just hit shift and D with this one still selected and make a duplicate of it. Now let's get these nodes connected. We're gonna be skipping the second mix color for now to make things a little bit easier to explain. We'll attach it later. So first we can zoom in here. We're gonna connect from this color down here to slot A. Then we can move down here and connect from this color to slot B. And then we're gonna connect from this result here all the way over here into the base color. Now let's zoom into this mix node that we just connected. And we're gonna change it from mix to multiply instead. And then we're gonna set the factor all the way up to one. As usual, this multiply mode just helps Blender to overlay only the black parts. And then the factor set to one, make sure that it's using the full opacity. Now that these images have been blended together, let's rotate the bottom scribble image so that they crisscross each other. So we're gonna zoom out and then go to this bottom grouping here. We're gonna zoom in here to the mapping node. So first we'll go to this X location and we're gonna set this to negative 1.9, then hit enter. This just simply shifts the image a little bit off center. Then we'll go down here to the X rotation. We're gonna set that to 12.5. And then lastly, we're gonna set this Z rotation back down to zero. And now if we look at the image in the background now, we can see that these lines crisscross each other and make sort of an X pattern across the image. That's because we have two different scribbles overlaid on top of each other, and then we rotated one so that's rotating the opposite direction. So rather than the lines going from right to left, they're not going left to right. And this just creates a nice hatching pattern that makes it a little bit more complex and helps break it up a little bit. So now we have our images blended together, but it's not quite as high contrast as we'd like due to the amount of gray present in these textures. If we eliminate some of the gray, we'll see more defined scribble lines in the texture that'll make them appear a little bit more like wires rather than just a scribbly pattern. We're going to need to add a new node for this effect. So first we'll zoom out here so we can get a better view. Then we're going to click and drag on these nodes and move them to the left to make some room. And now we can hit Shift and A, go to Search, and then type in Color Ramp. We're going to choose Color Ramp here and then place that down here in the middle. So now let's get this Color Ramp attached to our system. We're just going to click and drag it and then place it here on top of this line. That'll automatically connect it for us. Now let's zoom in here to this color ramp. And then all we need to do is grab this right slider. So select this little triangle or set it to the one channel. And we're gonna set the position to 0.7 Then hit enter. We can see here we've added more white to this gradient. It's also brightened this image in the background a little bit, making it a little bit more black and white instead of black, white, and gray in the middle. It's a relatively subtle change, but these small adjustments really add up to make a better material. Now we can go down here we're gonna zoom out, make sure you have this color ramp selected, and then hit Shift and D to duplicate it. We're just going to click and place it down here on top of this other line. That'll automatically connect it. Now that it's been connected, we've applied this exact same adjustment, making it more contrasty to both of these images. So we can see in back here, we're seeing a lot more of just black lines with white in between them rather than those shades of gray that we had before. Okay, so now we have one last node to set up before we finish this material. We're going to be connecting the second mix node that we left out down here. So all we need to do is click and drag this mix node that we have floating out here and just place it here on this line. We'll be using this node to control the color behind the black scribble texture. So rather than having black scribbles on a white background, we can have black scribbles on top of any color background in our case. However, we'll be using a dark gray. So let's zoom in here on this new mix node. We're going to change it from mix to multiply, then we'll set it to factor to one. And then lastly, we're gonna go down here to the B socket. And instead of plugging anything into this, we're just going to change this color. So we're gonna to go to the value and type in 0 0.01 and then hit enter. And now we can see that this black scribble texture is being overlaid on top of a really dark gray. So it's really making this look like it's just kind of a dark void beyond. And if you squint, you can kind of see here that there's lines and maybe these are wires or the tops of buildings. Our goal here is to make this kind of nondescript, just darkness in the background, but we don't want it just be pure black. We want it to have a little bit of texture kind of like the rest of the image, which is where this scribble texture comes in. And then the very last step before we finish this texture might seem like an odd one, but it is going to help our scene. So we're going to zoom out here so we can see the full texture. And then we're going to select this green node here, this principled BSDF, and we're just going to delete it. So we'll delete this, and then we're going to plug in this mix node, the result, over here right into the surface socket. Eliminating the shader portion, which was that green node from this material, allows us to remove the ability to receive lighting and shadows on this material. This means that the background material can't receive shadows or lighting from nearby objects. 
it's important that this background material is unaffected by shadows and lighting, as we want it to look like an endless void of wires and structures that stretch off into the distance, not like a nearby wall with this void painted on it. That would make it look more like a matte painting from an old movie, and we're trying to avoid that. We want this to look like it kind of stretches infinitely into the background, so you don't want shadows being cast on this wall, say from the bridge or the archway nearby, because this plane is actually quite close to the backside of this. So by removing the shader node, we've removed all ability for this to interact with lighting. It's just an image at this point. As always, once we're done with our material, feel free to go in here and make things a little bit more tidy by moving things closer together, because we do kind of spread this out to make room for stuff. So feel free to just move things together and make it a little bit more pleasing looking. And that's it. The last material we needed for our scene is complete. While this material doesn't take up nearly as much of the image as the object material, it's still an important part of completing the world that we're creating. These scribbles add an illustrative vibe that not only adds to the hand-drawn nature of our render, but also helps fill in that void with the implication of further wires and structures beyond. In the next lesson, we'll add some freestyle line work to our render. I'll see you there.